You've been in the spotlight too long already. I want you out of the picture completely. Just hear me out. Your way, there's no guarantee you'll get the job. Even if I leave. You gone. I don't see any problems at all. Isn't gonna be easy. But the following I have, <coughs> you're gonna need me to pull this off. I have to find a valid excuse to leave the show. Well, you're a very creative person. I'm sure you'll think of something. <coughs> well, it'll have to be something that the brass will buy. <coughs> Especially if I'm gonna tell them you're gonna take over. Oh, wait, I can't, I can't breathe. Those things were gonna kill you. I know my wife, Doctor. And the trash she's attracted to. You might be surprised. Now you get your coat. Walk out of that door, Collier, with my wife. I'll ruin you. I'll go to the university, tell them about the drugs you're using, about the carnal relations you had with a patient, my wife. What is it? The book? Yes, of course. Without her, there's no book. News at 11. Why don't you ask her to submit to a lie detector test? Lie detector test? Sure. Well, that's not admissible in court. Well, it's not a question of being admissible in court. I'm talking about for you. If you actually believe that she was innocent, then you could turn your full energies to finding the real murders. That's a very good idea, sir, but there's no way that I can force her to submit to such a test. Let me ask her. She trusts me, and if I advise it, I, I, I think she'll take it. And you think that she'll pass such a test? I'd stake my reputation on it. Now, the lie detector test does nothing more than show your reactions to a series of questions. If you really believe you're telling the truth, that's what the test will show. And through hypnosis, I can make you believe that story so no one can dispute it. It's merely a matter of post-hypnotic suggestion. Will it work? Of course it'll work. You've always been a good subject. I took the liberty of bringing along the drug. After the test, the lieutenant will have no choice but to leave you alone and go after our intruders. It's frightening, Mark. What choice do we have? The longer the lieutenant digs into this, the greater the risk. We have to convince him now that he's wrong about you. Trust me, darling. Trust me. Am I stupid? I must be missing the point. Well, you can see, sir, that these two cigarettes were put out in two completely different ways. One was crushed, others twisted. Exactly. Twisted, crushed. Lieutenant people put out cigarettes in many different ways. 
But that's the point, sir. Someone else was there. Someone else was there. Of course. That's good. Why didn't I think of that? Now, sir, I don't know what this all means. Well, it's food for thought. Oh, definitely, sir. This is something that you want. Thank you, Wade. The driver's waiting. Well, you go right ahead, sir. I want to hold you up. Dinner, that's really good. Maybe you should host the show. <laughs> Fix his hair. <laughs> Keep you posted. Lieutenant? <laughs> uh, he's got a great sense of humor. Yes, he, he does. Now, if that's true, sir, your alibi is not that strong. As a matter of fact, I went to the university. I couldn't find anybody there that recalls seeing you earlier. Am I to uh, presume that I'm currently your chief suspect? I'm not sure the suspect is a strong enough word. Well, in that case, I should be locked up. Of course, I'm not. Therefore, I presume that you have no proof. Not yet. Uh, you'll let me know when you do, won't you? You will be the first to know, Doctor. If you don't mind. Would you, sir? You want me to sign this? For my wife. Uh, she really get a kick out of it. You were saying something about a medical examiner's report. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Mr. Clark died of nicotine poisoning. Nicotine poisoning? Sir Bud smoked himself to death. That's great. What? Your picture, sir. It wasn't the nicotine in the cigarette tobacco that killed him. It was nicotine sulfate. Nicotine sulfate? What's that? Oh, you never heard of it? No. Oh, well, sir, it's one of the deadliest poisons there is. It takes only one drop to kill a man. That's incredible, Lieutenant. You're telling me that Bud was murdered? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Clark, he was murdered, all right. I know you always thought there was some sort of mystery surrounding Bud's death, but poisoned, who would have thought of that? Well, right from the start, I thought there was something fishy here. Yes, I, I, I remember you... You were worried about the fingerprints being on only one side of the page. Didn't make any sense. Well, you were right. And now it appears, at least to me, that somebody must have placed Bud's hand on that paper. The murderer. Have you gotten anything or not? I have a telephone call. What phone call? You called her. I deny it. That officer found the receiver off the hook when he broke through a locked door. Congratulations, is that it? Why'd she take off her clothes before she jumped? You tell me. Why'd she put her valuables in her shoe? Because she thought she was going swimming. Lieutenant, forgive me for interrupting. We could speculate all day on how Najadina died. Wouldn't mean a damn thing. The problem with your theory is you have no proof, do you? Yes or no? You're under arrest. What for? Murder. You better have a warrant. I have a... You're right, Doctor. I can't prove that you killed Mrs. Donner, but I can prove that you killed Mr. Donner. Today, you're going to see firsthand the capture of two suspects profiled on Crime Alert last week. Due to a tip from one of our viewers, we've led the police to a motel across the street from where I'm standing at this very moment. Police, open up! Barbara Baylor conspired with Duke DeMarco to kill her husband for the $500,000 insurance policy on his life. I want to thank the viewers who watch our show. Because of you, criminals like Barbara Baylor and Duke DeMarco can be taken off our streets. That's a wrap. Just one more thing.